I hope you like reading. If not, I'm going to be gently pushing you into reading a little bit things. Not much, not much, little bit. Hey there everyone, Hitesh here. In case you are new to the channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. It gives me, again, a big motivation. Regardless of that, let's move forward into our MongoDB and Mocha series. So now we want to run an actual test. So far we have been doing dummy stuff. This is going to be an actual test, I promise, this time. So for that, we have to read a little bit onto the Mongoose website and we are on to the document section where we have a nice example about this schema.pre. So what you'll notice, we whenever we run this save, we actually can run a function. Now, whenever you see this function that we can actually pass on a function, also assume that it's kind of a promise which can have a then and a catch syntax as well. Now, if you're using the previous style of writing these tests, definitely go for functions, that's okay. In case you are writing into a new style of code like ES6 or something, then we are gonna use promises, can, then and catch. Okay, now that's just clear up. There is a nice comment that says, Mongo will set is new to false if save succeeds. So what is going to happen? Now, there is this flag and you can see that we can use it by this dot is new. So almost like any property, whenever you save that, you can use it. So there is something known as this is new. Now, as soon as an object moves into an actual MongoDB, this flag is turned as false. So that's all what we have to see and look into this. Now, surely there is another was new, which you can explore a little bit. Some people like to use was new. Some people like to use is new. Now, how to use that? So for that, we have to go back onto our document, onto our code file. There we go. Okay. So we have commented out and we also know from the previous video that assert always expects a true value so that it it just passes on all the test. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and create a user. So we're gonna simply call this as const. So what is going to be the first student that you want to save? I'm gonna call this as Sam, uh, again, for no reason. And we're gonna call this new. And since we have already imported the student, so we're gonna call the student now. As soon as you call up the student, you have to pass on a property here. It expects you to pass on a name. In case you forget that, here it is. It always expects you to pass on a property name, which should be of string type. Okay, so we're gonna be passing on an object. We're gonna be calling, hey, name. Your name is gonna be Sam. Now again, Sam should be in the double quotes because that's what we are expecting there. Okay, so this is all done. Now this is the object just being created. It's not being saved. Now as saving in the MongoDB is like ridiculously simple, just call this object and it has a property of directly uh, calling it as a save. There we go. And that's all we have to do. Now it is being saved. But this is only being saved in the database. We haven't done any kind of testing for that. In order to do the testing, we can use that flag that we have just read, which is is new. Surely you can use was new. We are going to go for is new. So if that's the case, what is going to happen? The save actually returns you two things. The then, in case the save is successful. And in case the save is not successful, we are going to handle that in the catch part. Now definitely the catch part is much more easier to handle, so we're going to be doing that by a pair of parentheses, arrow functions, these guys, and simply just logging out the error, whatever the error is. In this case, I am not interested in just displaying the actual error, we're going to just go for that. Surely, 100% you do have an access of error here, and you can dump the actual error, which was helpful for us in the case of localhost, surely you can do that. In this case, I don't want to do that really. Okay. Now, moving into the then part. So we have handled the then part. Now, handle the catch part. Now we're going to go into the then part. So use again, pair of parentheses, an arrow function, and there we go. As simple as it sounds. Okay, so far everything is simple. Now, remember, we are having this assert, which we haven't used. In the assert, we need to implement something which returns us true and false. So if I check out sam.isNew, remember, it was checking out with the exact same property. What is going to happen? Let's just check it out in the documentation again. So it says, if the record was saved successfully, we are going to turn this into a false. But if false is going to happen in my assert, that means test case is going to be failed. So in order to avoid this, what I can do is I can turn my flag a reverse. In order to do so, we can use this operator, which I hope you have read it in a whole lot of classes on C, Python. This just reverse the value. True becomes false, false becomes true. So that's what the logic is. Okay, now our test is gonna be passed. I hope so. So we're gonna save this and everything auto formatting kicks in. Look good, it looks good, looks pretty good. Now we're going to run this test one more time. So clean up the screen, come on, clean up the screen, there we go. And now we're gonna run npm run test. So definitely it says creating a user in DB, one test passed. 
Okay, but how to verify it further? Surely tests are always a good way to verify, but we're gonna go for a Robo 3T, and there we go. And uh, do we have a new database? No, we don't have a new database, so it looks like we need to have a new connection again. Come on, I can just disconnect. How can I refresh it? Yeah, there we go, it got refreshed. Ah, that's awesome. Never figured it out that we can even refresh it. To be honest, I don't use it much. So we have this Mongo tube, we can expand it, and inside that we have collection, and we have got a student, so I can open this up, and we have got a collection here, which says object ID and Sam. Awesome, pretty awesome. But we have got a couple of issues here, and that issue is how many times you're going to run your test. In order to explain that, I have to actually run this test a couple of more times. So we're going to kill that. Control C is your favorite shortcut. We're going to run that. And we see, okay, it has got passed again. And probably you are super excited. You want to kill that again. You run that again and you see that, yeah, my very first test that I've actually written is getting passed on. And when you move on to this uh, here, and all I want to do is refresh. So I guess Control R, Command R. So there we go. So now we have got three objects inside it and uh, all of them are Sam's. Not a good way. Not a good way of having all of this. So what people actually like to do in these case of test environment, definitely not in the production, is whenever the tests are being run, they try to flush out everything. And in order to run and uh, read more about these flushing of the things, you might want to go into the Mocha and might want to read a little bit more about the hooks. So uh, we're gonna go into the hook section directly and notice here we have got this before and before each. So this time we're gonna use something known as before each, before our even the test start to run up, we might want to flush this here. So definitely in case you want to give it a try, I highly, highly recommend you to do so. Just like we have used the before, we this time want to use the before each. So what we want to do in the before each, again, it's gonna go in the helper file. In the before each, we simply want to just drop the entire student table here, student collection here, sorry about that, I didn't mean table, enter the student collection here, and then only the test should run up. Okay, sounds fair. So in the next video, we're gonna take a look on to this problem that we are facing right now, and we're gonna just re resolve that using these hooks. That's it for this video. I hope you are enjoying this series. In case you are enjoying it, don't forget to hit that subscribe, and I'm gonna catch you up in the next video.